Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to show you the Penn State Industries Fluting Guide, unpackaged and the parts that comes with it. And I'll show you how to assemble this. Now you can pause, stop, and replay the clips and keep doing that until you get a grasp on what's being presented. I do that a lot myself. I'll watch entire videos many times over. Exercise good shop safety to protect yourself. I may have safeguards removed in my videos, but that's solely for clarity to demonstrate a process. Keep your safeguards in place to protect yourself from injury. Now safeguards are, but not limited to, safety glasses, hearing protection, lung protection, push sticks, and other guides so you don't cut off any body parts. So be safe. In these videos, I'm not able to cover all angles, aspects, and specifics of every situation, technique, materials, or tools. Now I'm showing you how I make things with the tools and materials that I have at hand. In this video, I'll make references to links on the web for more information. And I'll show those links if they're not too lengthy in this video. And I'll put them in the description below. A fluting guide allows you to make grooves along the length of pieces you have turned, such as spindles and utensil handles. The flutes give a decorative feature and on handles an ability for a better grip. Kind of like the grooves on a screwdriver handle. Now this works best with pieces that are straight or have a straight taper from one end to another. It doesn't work well when there's a curve along that length. Now, I did search YouTube for other videos on this fluting guide and I did not find any on this particular brand. I did find several other videos on others. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to assemble and use this. Okay, this is all the parts as it comes out of the box. I've unpackaged it, taken parts out of their little Ziploc packages and everything else. This is basically the base platform here on which everything will mount. It's got two T-tracks in here that will guide this T-track bar on there. Now these have a square on the bottom, some screws on the top, so you can slide this on. Okay, this slides on into those tracks there, and this will be a guide for the base of this that the router mounts onto. So once you get that on there, kind of tighten these up a little bit, hold them in place. Next parts that go on are these guides and what these do is this slips into the T-track on that and then these provide guides for stops for the length of your flutes. So I'll just snug these down for a little bit. These knobs here go into these slots and these are what goes through the bed of your lathe. Then these hook underneath there and then you can tighten these up to secure it in place on the bed of your lathe. Next is putting together this platform for holding this Rocky 30 router here and thankfully they sent this one instead of the one that's in the illustrations. This one looks like it's a lot better. So you'll notice that we have four holes here and then these two holes that are threaded. The way this goes together is that this part mounts onto these four screw holes. They give you four of these screws. So let's get them started. And we'll get these uh, secured in here. like to Snug them at first, let things line up before I tighten them down. Now this kind of material, you know, you don't need to tighten these screws down real hard since it's a composite material. It's not going to be as hard as a hardwood is. This particular screw hole here is hard to get to because of this. So if you're using like an electric screwdriver, that's going to be hard to get into that. So it's a lot easier with a straight screwdriver here. It doesn't take much to do these anyway. Uh, so I'll just snug these up and I've got that piece mounted on there like that. Next we have this piece here which will mount on here and this is the part that will carry the router on there. We'll put a couple of like hose clamps that will hold these in. I kind of position them over so that these uh, screw handles here are kind of over in this position. Now this one, I suppose I could have put it on differently or slipped it onto the uh, base of the router before doing this, but what I'll do is just kind of unscrew this all the way and then slip it on there. Just takes an extra minute or so to do it. Okay, get it around that. that. 
So these hose clamps are going over these parts of the bracket here to secure that on there. As I said, I tried to position these like this. I like to get this hose clamp so that it's close to the edge of this. And also, I like to line up this lock button so that's vertical like this. And try to get it close to the edge because when I put this front guard on, it's going to be important to have the correct spacing there. Now the next thing may be to put these handles on. They screw into these uh, like machine holes here. You get them down there. Now these handles kind of rotate, but they don't tighten those screws any further. So it takes a number 10 metric wrench to uh, tighten these up. You can snug them up. You don't have to muscle them down. It's just not necessary to be doing that. Now what I can do is to kind of tighten this track in place so it doesn't keep sliding around on me. I can see as I got this here, it's handles you can put it down, try and keep it flat on the platform so you don't rock in any direction, especially when you're approaching your work, you want to keep it flat. Then these two guides here will guide you as far as the length of your flutes go. Okay, next is put this plexiglass piece on here. And that's fastened by a screw and a nut. Now this nut is a number 8 metric. So I put the screw through here, put the washer on the back side and the nut. Small parts, uh, sometimes hard to work with here. So just kind of get that nut straight on there and then get the screw started. Leave it a bit loose yet because we're going to be needing to adjust this plate a little bit. Okay, now what I want to do is adjust this plate. I'll tighten up these screws so that it's centered on there. So that this can move up and down freely without you know running into any size of the plates. Let's get that snug. Check my alignment. These you don't have to crank down real hard. Just uh, good and snug. And since these screws don't have elastic stop nuts on them, you may have to check these periodically or before each use. Make sure they're tight yet and that everything is lined up. So it's uh, always a chance they can come loose. So it'll be one of those safety features to check before you get going. Now you can adjust this height up and down. Like no micro adjustments, but you can kind of use your fingers here, I guess, and try and get a point. And then eventually on the lathe, we'll be lining up the tip of the bit with the center of our workpiece. Now with this comes a wrench for tightening up the bit here. It's got this, you push down this uh, stop nut locks in there so you can tighten or loosen that. Doesn't take a lot. This is just a stamp piece of metal for doing this. Uh, you don't have to crank them down real tight. Just good and snug. And if you want to get real hard about it, then maybe you could use one of these. But that would be overkill. Don't want to do that. Also, this Rocky router seems like a pretty decent router. A little trim router. And it comes with a spare set of brushes. Also, when I mount this up here, if you look at the picture online of how they got this mounted, this power cord is coming out up here. So I've got it reversed here because when I'm working this, this on and off button is real close and easy for my thumb. And then I can adjust the speed pretty easily here. So I like this position here, not the way that they have it pictured in the catalog or anything online. It just seems uh, really backwards to do it that way. This comes with a quarter inch core bit. Now if you have a basic set of router bits, I think we all seem to go out and buy a basic set of router bits, you might already have something like that. They also sell online a couple of other bits. One is like a straight bit, so it gives you like a flat surface along your uh, round surface. Then there's a V bit also. And I bought this set of bits uh, at Lowe's for, I don't know, I think it was about 85 bucks I got it for. And it has all those bits in it, so I don't need to order those extra bits for this router. And these are all quarter inch drive bits. Uh, we all kind of start out with something like that, and then later on we start adding on different kinds of bits. And, or half inch shank bits. Works great. Uh, actually, I've got all the bits already, so I don't have to order anything additional. I think that's it. Uh, next step is I'll get this mounted up on the lathe and do a demonstration of how that works. Here at my 
lathe I've mounted up a piece of 2x2, two two, one and a half by one and a half construction lumber. It's pine so it's soft. It's not going to turn real smooth right away here. But I got this turned and leveled and I compare you know, my straightness of this by putting a straight edge on here to see if there's any light. There's barely anything at the very ends of it but the rest of it looks very straight. If you're going to be doing something that goes at a slope along there then you'll be looking to find a straight edge there that's not showing any light and it's all smooth all the way there for the entire length. And then the adjustment that you can make on this fluting table allows you to compensate for that angle. Okay, now putting this base on here for the fluting guide has to be positioned here right in front of the headstock. I line it up with this corner here about the middle of this curve. Then I line up these back edges with the back edge of the lathe bed there. And I take a magic marker and I mark black marks here on both sides of this because this is where this is going to have to sit and the tailstock is not going to be able to be in that zone between those marks. Tailstock can't sit in there so it's going to be the short range and the long range. When you go to set this up tailstock and you like the piece that you're working with it's going to have to fit either in front of these lines here like to that which gives you a maximum spindle range of like 0 to 11 inches then back here like I said this is the no man zone because this is where that piece of the base is going to be across for attaching to the bed here having the tailstock here or further back gives you a spindle range of 11 inches or more depending on the length of your bed here for putting this fluting guide bed on here, or base, got to get the uh, tailstock on first because it's going to be inside where this part of the base is. Now what I have to do is to get these parts to slip between the rails here, or both parts here, then get them positioned and get them tightened down. It's going to be hard to see what I'm doing here. It's kind of awkward and sometimes it just falls in place for you quick and easy and sometimes not. There we go. Okay, get this in position, and it's good to be able to use those lines there that I marked um, for giving me a guide on where to line this up at. Lining up with this part in the back here to make it line up there. That way this whole thing will be in alignment with the lathe bed. Now I'll get this other screw here tightened up. Pretty good alignment. I'll try to get these screws tightened so the center in there so those plates won't get crooked and off kilter which could maybe give you bad results and less stability so got it under good now now this piece that i'm working on i've got a spur bit here drive bit it's got its marks on there from when i was doing the turning so get that on there that on tighten down tail stock turn a little bit to get a little tension on it so i've got it mounted in there pretty good. Now all I have to do is line up the fluting guide here. I'm going to lock this in. This has got uh, points where it locks in at. I can do that and it locks into place there. This has 24 settings on it and it's got half mark settings in between those two. Uh, smaller pieces you go the fewer flutes you can do because it's just not going to be enough uh, space to do a whole lot of flutes. So I'm going to start out at zero, and on this I'll probably do four flutes, at least just as a demonstration here. Well, I'm going to start out at two. It doesn't have a zero, so if I go two, and then 24 should be quite opposite. I'll find out as I go. I bring my fluter tool here. What I need to do is to put a bit in yet. I'll put in this quarter inch fluting bit that came with it. Okay, so I can put this uh, fluting bit in. Put this nut on. It touches bottom there, so I'm bringing out just a tad so it's not sitting on the bottom. It's, uh, it's like any other router should never bottom out your bits. We got that snugged up. It rotates freely so the lock is released. Then what I'm going to do is set my height on this so I'm hitting about center on the side of this. Now I'm going to adjust this guide bar back. Oh, 
Okay, so I've got my guide bar adjusted to give me a certain contact point here. I set my stop for this point here to be at that max. This one I'm going to set, come over to about there, not quite all the way through. Set up this end for a stop point. And so I should be able to go in there and go through. I got this set up for doing maybe about a quarter inch depth cut. I'll see how that goes. So what I'll do is get this going. Kind of plunge into it and then move over to my max on this length and move along to that length until I've completed the flute. We'll see how this goes with soft wood and whether or not it throws a bunch of stuff around. And I'll put on my face shield get this plugged in. Okay. See that made a flute along there? Rather deep. I should have went a lot shallower than that. So I'll see about adjusting this to go more shallow. Okay, now I've got this set to a shallower cut. It may still be too deep, but this is something I'll have to learn about finessing how to set some of these depths. What I might do is use some of that setup bar stock to go between this board here and between this guide that will give me you know, some depths that I want to try and accomplish. So I think uh, some setup bar stock will help me get that set up. Now, if you can see that, that made a much shallower depth of cut which is more towards what it should be like. If you're doing some long spindles, you might want some deeper cuts. Depends on the decorative effect you're trying to accomplish. That looks good. It worked pretty well, very smoothly. Even with the soft wood, it didn't ladder things all over on me. Obviously, this depth here is shallower than that one. And it's like I said, I think with some setup bars for establishing some of these distances and setups, it'll help a lot. Okay, to kind of wrap this up here, some tips and caveats is for adjusting how this tip engages with your workpiece here. I found that using some bar stock, uh, you can get the brass bar gauges uh, for around 20 to 30 dollars at Rockler and some other places online. I know Amazon has them too. This one's one eighth inch and I can just set that here against that. Set my piece against there. And then I can adjust this guide bar in and out so that this bit just kisses my workpiece. Now you know this came with this red handle for doing these screws, but I found for over here, because of this uh, display panel, is in the way that I can't uh, get engaged there and twist the handle, so I use a Allen wrench on that part. So I loosen that up and I kind of lean my body against this edge here to hold the router in place there. And just so it's just kissing there, then I'll tighten down this Allen wrench here to secure this bar. Then I'm going to move this along and the brass bar over here up against this stop. And then bring this up so it just kisses my workpiece. Then I can tighten this screw. Now, it's just barely kissing there. And this part here, barely kissing that edge. So when I take this bar out now, I'll get it engaged and make a 1 8 inch depth of cut. I had thought about putting measurement marks across here for trying to align this bar. But the problem with that is that if your piece is not perfectly straight or if it's at a slope or angle and it's an angle you need to cut, these marks aren't going to do any good at all. You need to use these uh, setup bars, brass bars, to you know get your depth of cut set based on the different end points that you're going to go to. That way you should get a real consistent cut throughout that. Another is a caveat about this router. Now this router adjusting the height up and down is just this knob and doing with your fingers here. It's not real precise and there's no like precision adjustment or micro adjustment that you can make to get the heights. So when I was doing this, I was lining it up and with my spur drive here lined up and I looked at the tip of one of the spurs 
and what I did is lined up the center of my bit with that center on the point on that spur. So I knew it's very, very close to center on that then. So as far as uh, setting up your heights, that's how I do that. As far as setting up the depth of cut, adjusting it with this bar in and out and using the brass setup bars. Also another thing is that both these surfaces and this table and this that the router rides on is all laminated. It's a slick surface that slides around pretty good as it is, but I might recommend waxing these surfaces so that they uh, do have some protection from wear and tear and it makes it probably slide a little bit easier too. And always between cuts, it's always good to clear out wood chips and stuff so that they don't get in the edges here and create an offset on you unintentionally. Unfortunately, these don't have any relief edges on them for dust to collect into, so you're gonna have to make sure you blow it out every time before use so you're not getting a depth of cut that's too shallow. Well, to wrap this up, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you got the inspiration to make something, please give me a like and share it with your family, friends, and fellow craftspersons. Also, please subscribe so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. And be sure to hit that bell icon so you won't miss out on anything. Well, as I always say, if the ladies don't find you handsome, at least they should find you handy. Thank you.